Hey all you cool cats and kittens, Casmo here, welcome aboard the AV-8B Harrier. Today we're going to talk about the lightning pause, some new functionality, and some HOTAS controls. So sit back, relax, get something to drink, hit that subscribe button, and let's get to it. Alright, so before we get started, a couple things we're going to need to have mapped is our nose wheel steering target undesignate button, and our sensor select switch, which should be on our HOTAS. Alright, so obviously the first thing we need to do is figure out how to turn this thing on. So much like it used to be, we're going to go over here, we're going to hit menu, we're going to hit teapod, and right down here, you can see it says standby. We're going to go ahead and hit that button, and it is going to come into operation. Kind of hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this brightness down just a little bit. And if we hit that day, night cursor right there, it's going to turn a little bit brighter for us, and we'll mess with gain here in a little bit. All right, so first we'll go over the MFD and all the buttons, switchology here. And just for some commonality, I'm not a big fan of the OSB numbering system. Seems like every plane's got a little bit differently. So we're going to go ahead and just do this dumb Apache style. Uh, we've got the top row, so T, bottom row for B left and right so t1 through 5 b1 through 5 l and r1 through 5. all right so first thing we're going to start off on l1 here so ccd so it's charge couple display uh, fancy way of saying this is your tv camera so we're going to go ahead and hit that one time and it's going to take us to FLIR mode and we'll go right back into ccd l2 and 3 we've got our zoom l4 is our data uh, Pretty much none of this is operational or really has any sort of day-to-day -day use, so we're going to go ahead and skip that. And right here at L5, we've got wide and narrow field of view. All right, looking down at the B row, we've got AR, which is area track. Uh, that's essentially the camera is going to look at an area. It's going to kind of grab a scene and pay attention to that and just kind of keep track of that. Uh, if we hit this, it's going to go to point track. So essentially, you're going to get a little box that's going to appear. It's going to try to pick up something. Now, in real life, it's going to look for contrast. Uh, in reality of the game, it's kind of looking what it seems to be looking is just for objects. So it's not going to grab uh, the same level of contrast as you would in real life. So it's a, a little bit harder to use. One more time, it's going to go in a movement track or move track. And this is kind of an interesting feature that once again is not really uh, replicated in the game. It's, it's a lot like point track, except it has some sort of movement logic. So let's say that we're tracking a vehicle and it's, you know, we're following it at a known speed and then suddenly it goes behind, say, a building, the sensor's going to not just lose the track, it's going to continue along that same trajectory and that same velocity in hopes of picking the target back up on the other side. Uh, but again, in the game, this really has no functionality that I've seen. It does seem to just work a lot like point track. All right, INR is kind of an inertial, inertia setting, um, a lot like area track. So in real life, from what I understand, uh, doing some reading, uh, just like area track, it's going to look at an area, except it's going to be based off the inertial navigation system of the aircraft. So it's going to know where it is, it's going to know where it's looking. And that way, if there's any sort of obscuration like clouds or smoke or something like that, it's going to continue to look at that area versus in an area track where it would try to grab onto the scene. If something got in the way of that, it, it may slide off of that scene. All right, so continuing to the right, we can see we've got a countdown timer here. Uh, the PIP, I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's not actually doing anything. And Slave, we're not going to talk about that right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense on the ground. Uh, we'll talk a lot about that in the air. All right, so continuing on, we're going to take a look at the top level. So T1 through 4, that is our laser control. So T1 is safe and now armed. LTIP is a function that is not replicated in the game. It's the laser target imaging program. Uh, it's basically a secondary type laser system that's going to enhance the imagery that you see on the screen. T3 is obviously our fire switch that's going to turn on the laser. And T4 is going to change the functionality of the laser. So here we've got training, which we're not really going to use. Uh, laser, this is just the basic, you're squirting the laser, you're going to get range, you're going to get a designation. Uh, push that again, we're going to get designate and mark. So not only do we have a laser, but we have an infrared pointer, an IR pointer. Uh, that is going to be your actual marking. So once you squirt that, if somebody's got uh, night vision goggles on, they're going to see that. And as well, you're going to be shooting your laser at that same spot. And if we rotate one more time, we're going to be at just mark. So that is just that IR pointer. One more time, we're going to get to eye safe laser. That's a, another training thing that we're not going to replicate here in DCS World. All right, so T5 is our super wide field of view. Uh, this is a FLIR only option. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and activate the pod, slide it over here. And you can see we're looking out this way. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. It's going to go to FLIR and it's going to go to a super wide field of view. And there you go. You can see that we're much further out. And we'll turn that off and you can see it zoom back in. Now it does default to FLIR. Again, I'm not 100% uh, clear if this is a FLIR only system in real life or if this is just some sort of bug within the game. Uh, that's kind of the problem with the Harrier is a lot of times you never really know. Is it broken or is it just the way that it is? 
All right, continuing on on the right side, um, we can see there's nothing there. We're going to go ahead and switch the FLIR just to populate those screens. I'll slide it down a little bit so we can see. And as you can see, we've got white hot and black hot. Right here below, you can see gain. This really doesn't do anything except make those numbers change. MTC is not replicated within the game. It does create these little numbers here, but it doesn't actually do what a real MTC does. And then, of course, if we hit operation, we're just going to go right back into standby. All right, so we've got a few functions that are replicated from the screen onto our HOTAS. Uh, we can use our sensor select switch with a short or long, so short is less than a second, and long I believe is uh, greater than 0.8 seconds. Uh, so we're going to start with the left, and uh, just a quick click to the left, and you can see that we've gone from wide to narrow field of view. I'm going to click it again, and it goes back to wide. Now if we hold it left long, again that's for about a second or more, it should go into laser spot search. Uh, one thing I've noticed on the ground it doesn't really work very well and on the air it's sort of 50-50. Sometimes it'll start slewing back and forth looking for the laser code and again that's whatever code we have programmed in up here. Uh, but otherwise sometimes it just kind of sticks into one spot or I don't know, just, there's no rhyme or reason to it right now so I think it's got a little bit of a bug. Alright, if we're going to go sensor select switch down uh, short and we're going to see that we're going to change, you can see there at the bottom left AR and we're going to click and it's gone into point track, we're going to click it again and into move track. All right, if we hold it down for a sensor select switch aft long, it's gonna go into INR. And again, if we just go click uh, to the short, it'll take us right back into our initial area point and movement. All right, sensor select switch to the right short in TV mode is not gonna do anything for us. I'm doing it right now. Uh, but if we hold it long and release, it's gonna go into FLIR mode. And if we go short to the right, it's going to change our polarity. And if we hold it long again, it's going to take us back to TV. So again, uh, no function in TV mode, only in FLIR mode. All right, so sensor select switch forward. Uh, we're going to hit that once, short. And you can see we've gone into slave mode. So as you can see, we've got INS here. It is no longer T-Pod, but we can still move the pod. But notice it's going much slower now. That I've got full deflection in the slew. That's because it's slaved right now to your DMT. So if you had your DMT camera, this is what would be driving the T-Pod. The T-Pod is actually slave to that camera. All right, so if we want to take it back into T-Pod mode, we go sensor select switch down twice, and then we could hold down sensor select switch to aft long, and it's going to take us back into INR. So we're going to take off, put a couple of these functions into use, and show you how they work. All right, so we're up in the air. We're going to go ahead and turn on our T-Pod menu T-Pod standby to operation. Go ahead and turn our brightness down. You can see we still have INS, so I'm going to sensor select switch down twice. T-Pod, and now you can see right there we've got our actual T-Pod marker, and I can move it, and our target designation queue is going to follow that along with our DMT. So now I'm going to hit forward and go into slave mode. And once again, I'm moving it, but you can see the T-Pod is moving much slower. That's because really right now we're just moving our DMT. So I'm going to hit sensor select switch aft once again, and you can see that I've actually pulled up the DMT mode, so you can see TV there. Uh, so once again, our T-Pod right now is slaved. We can't see it, uh, but it's slaved to the DMT. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the DMT off to the left somewhere, just so that we're obviously in a different area. And right now the DMT is a little bit screwed up on the HUD, so that's why you're seeing it kind of disappear. All right, so now I'm going to reactivate the T-Pod. And you can see that it has slaved over to where the DMT was looking. It's still in slave mode. So I'm going to sensor select switch down twice, Z-axis, and I've got T-Pod control. All right, so you can see that we have our code still as uh, quad ones. Uh, easiest way to change that, quite honestly, is over here, air to ground mode. Uh, on our horizontal situational display, L1, we're going to hit that. And it's going to bring up our codes and we can type in whatever code we need and now you can see that it's going to change on our teapot. Alright, some information that's going on in our teapot. You can see again our code. Right here you can see the grid that it's actually looking at and the lat long elevation. Additionally, this little dot is going to tell you roughly from a top-down view where the pod is looking in relation to the aircraft. So if this is the front of the aircraft, this is the left side, this is the right side, it's slewing off to our, say, 1, 2 o'clock right now. All right, so the last thing that's important I did mention earlier that we want to know is where our target undesignate slash nose wheel steering button is. 
Uh, right now we can see that our pod is pointing way off to the left. If we want to bring it forward for some reason, we can go ahead and tap that button twice, and it's going to bring the Todd right back forward. Now it's off the nose. We can much more easily reference the things in front of the aircraft. So how do we use this thing? Uh, quite simply, we're going to find the target area. We can stay in TV or we can go to FLIR mode. I'm going to go back to TV just because it's uh, pretty bright right now. And we can zoom in. Of course, we can use our zoom function here to get even more fidelity on the target area. All right, so once we get our target area, uh, we're going to go ahead and activate our laser. So we're going to take it from safe to arm. We're going to go ahead and change it to whatever we need to use it for. So we'll just put it on laser, uh, we'll leave that off, and we fire. And we should be getting indications on our HUD of an L right there. And also, right down there where it says target pod DES, you're going to see an L flashing. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it. Not much more to talk about. Uh, I hope that was helpful for some of you guys who are newer to the Harrier. I know there's a big sale going on, so guys are uh, picking this aircraft up. Hey, one thing to remember, if you're a new Harrier pilot in DCS, this is probably one of the buggiest modules in the game, at least of all the ones that I have flown. Um, and I'm not kidding when I say that if something doesn't seem to be right in the aircraft, it's probably 25% you, 75% the game. Um, I, I don't know why it seems to have one bug after another, uh, but it is just something that you're going to have to deal with with the Harrier, and it gets very frustrating. So just do your best, fight through, and if nothing else, just drop dumb bombs on people. Anyhow, I hope you guys have a good weekend. hope you have a great Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S., uh, and if you're not, well, then I hope you have a great Thursday. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care.